Oh, Sam. Well, everything's all safe down here. Let's go upstairs. Can you hand with him? Is it too heavy? No, no, I can manage fine. Thank you. <laughs> we'll run away to the children's department once again. Uh -huh. Okay, it's clear. The customers have all gone home now. Today's special, it's for everyone. Today's special, come join in the fun. With magic everywhere, a world for us to share. And friendly faces, hoping that you want to meet us there. For today's special, it's about to appear, it's about to appear. Today's special, shout it loud and clear. Today's special. Today's special is hats. What you doing, Jody? Oh, hi, Jeff. There's a big hat sale in the store tomorrow, and I have to get everything ready. Anything I can do? Sure. I have to go to the basement to get some tools. Suppose you go around the store and gather up all the hats you can find. I'd really appreciate it. No problem. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Okay, let's see. All the hats I can find. Ah, uh, here we are. Hats! <laughs> hats! Hats! Nothing very hard about this. Something wrong? These aren't hats? Oh. Maybe I better look up hats in the What Is It book. I can't very well help Jody if I don't know what I'm looking for. Let's see. A hamburger, hassle, hat. A covering for the head. Okay. No. No, you're right. This is definitely not a hat. <laughs> now, what, I wonder what else is in the book. Let's see. Hats can be worn for protection against the cold, against getting hurt, or worn for decoration. Wait a minute. I have one of those. <laughs> Only mine's a magic hat. Waldo the Magnificent gave it to me. Yeah, I guess, I guess he's just about the greatest magician in the whole world. You know, before I met Waldo, I was just another department store mannequin. But the day that Waldo put this hat on my head and said those magic words that I'll never forget. <laughs> um, hocus pocus, alamogocus. Something wonderful happened. Suddenly I could, I could see and hear and walk and talk. A regular Pinocchio. Well, you know, the, uh, the wooden puppet. <laughs> but like Pinocchio, I have a lot to learn about everything. And the most important thing I have to learn about is not to take off my hat. Because if I do, zap, it's back to being a mannequin. So if you ever see me start to take my hat off, don't let me do it. Yell, don't do it, okay? Please, don't ever, ever let me reach up here Put my hand on my hat and go like. There, I've got all the tools I need. How did you do? Did he take his hat off again? Oh, Jeff. It's a good thing Waldo taught your friends the magic words that bring you back to life. Ah. Oh. Now, let's see. Waldo said, Hocus Pocus. Uh, hocus pocus. Oh, dear. What was the rest? Do you remember? Hocus pocus, alamogocus. Ah. Hi, Jody. Hi. I did it again, didn't I? Oh, yeah, you did it again. <laughs> Oh, hey there. Hey, you know what? 
sometimes when I'm with one of my friends and uh, there's nothing to do, why, uh, I suggest we play a guessing game. Would you like to play a guessing game with me? Good. It's really easy. Here, I'll tell you how it works. First of all, I think of something, see? And then I give you clues or hints, and then you keep guessing and trying to guess what it is that I'm thinking of, see? All right, first of all, I gotta think of something. Um, all right. All right, the thing that I'm thinking of uh, gives off light, and it, uh, it helps you to see in the dark. There. Well, did you guess what I'm thinking of? No. Well, all right, I'll, I'll give you one more hint. Um, ah, oh, you gotta put batteries in it to make it work. There. Now, can you guess what it is? Hey, then, that's right. That's right, a flashlight. <laughs> ooh, ooh, goodness, that's bright. But it was a flashlight. A flashlight gives off light, and it uh, glows in the dark and makes it easier to see, and you have to put batteries in it to make it work. Oh, gosh, I love guessing games. Eh, well, guess I better get back to my rounds. Oh, here comes Jeff. Oh, I wonder what he wants. Yes, Jeff? I've got a secret. Hidden somewhere within this picture is a hat. Can you find it? You have to look carefully. Do you see the hat? There it is, all right. Pretty sneaky. Hey, Jody. Look what I've got. <laughs> Hundreds of hats. The store is full of them. Fantastic. Yeah. You've got all shapes and sizes. <laughs> Did you hear something? Get me out. I think it came from in there. Carnation, <laughs> oh. oh. if that don't beat all, huh? Sam, what are you doing in there? Well. That's what I'd like to know. One second, all I know is I'm making my security guard rounds and checking for burglars and whatnot. And the next thing I know, something yanks a hold of me and my hat and tosses us into this here bin. <laughs> Jeff? Well, you said bring back all the hats I could find. But not if they have people attached to them. Well, well, there's no harm done, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what in the world do you need all these hats for anyway, Jody? Well, it's a big hat sale in the morning, Sam. Hats, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, there's nothing like a hat to make a body feel like somebody, I always say. Well, what do you mean, Sam? Well, uh, you know, a hat can make you feel uh, special, important, kind of. Sure, like a nurse. Yep. Or, oh, maybe an astronaut. Yeah. Rocket Commander calling Earth. Come in, Earth. Yep. There's something about a hat, all right. <laughs> oh, there's something about a hat. There's something about a hat. It's something that makes you feel so fine. Whether it's yours or whether it's mine. Something that makes your whole face shine. Oh, there's something about a hat. <laughs> Hey, look at this here. I got it, I got it, boys. <laughs> Let me have it. Ooh. Whoa. Yeah, there's Whoa. something about it. Oh, Something that makes you feel so fine. Whether it's yours or oh, whether it's mine. Yay. Something that makes your whole face shine. There's something about a hat. Something about a hat. Put it on your head, you'll see there's something about a hat. I think there's something. <laughs> 
Do all four hats look the same? Take a closer look. One of these hats has something extra, something that none of the others have. Can you find the hat with something extra? There it is. See? This one has a feather. You spotted it. Jody. Mm-hmm. Are hats alive? What? Well, do they do they move along and <coughs> and, and, and hiccup? Of course not. Well then, <gasps> then what do you call that? I call that strange. Muffy, what are you doing? I'm having my lunch, if you don't mind. Uh, care for a pickle or a lemon rind? Lemons and pickles? Mm. Yeah. Oh. Would you like a verse, a short little rhyme? Well, it goes well after lunch or almost any time. Yeah, a verse would be nice. Okay. <clears throat> there was an old woman who lived in a hat with 14 children and one smelly cat. The hat was bulging, filled right to the brim. And the down inside, things were getting mighty grim. When the woman came home with one more kid, the hat shouted, 15, and blew its lid. <laughs> Whatever happened to the little old lady who lived in the shoe? Here are three words found in Muffy's last rhyme. Kid, cat, old. One of these words rhymes with hat. Do you know which word rhymes with hat? Kid, hat. Do they rhyme? Cat, hat. Do they rhyme? Old hat. Do they rhyme? Which word rhymes with hat? Kid, cat, or old? If you said cat, you're absolutely right. Hat and cat rhyme. Can you think of any other words that rhyme with hat? Fat, that's one. And mat. Somebody said rat. Good. Bat, pat, vat. They all rhyme too. Well, just finished my rounds and everything seems quiet in the store tonight. Uh, yes. You know, I'd like to let you kids in on a little secret if I could. Somewhere inside this old body of mine, there's a lit small boy who secretly wants to be a cowboy. Yep, that's the truth, a cowboy. And sometimes, late at night, when nobody else is around, I put on this hat here. <laughs> See? This is my cowboy hat. <laughs> yep, put on my cowboy hat and uh, all of a sudden I'm Sheriff Sam Crenshaw. Come on, big fella, and I grab my reins and I go galloping over the mountains. Let's make tracks. <laughs> yep. Winnie, Winnie, says the horse. <laughs> well, sir, I reckon you know that you're looking at just about the bravest man in the whole world. Yep, Fearless Sam, they call me. One tough hombre. <laughs> what was that? Uh, was that a lion? You think there are lions on the prairie? <laughs> Boy, what kind of a creature makes that sound? Huh. Uh, what? What? A rooster. Well, I reckon roosters won't hurt you. <laughs> Not the little ones, anyway. Giddy up, Paint. 
Did I ever tell you about the time that Fearless Sam came face to face with a rattlesnake? Yes, sir, a rattlesnake. I just stared that crawling critter down. Yes, I did. Bravest thing you ever saw. <laughs> Was that a snake? <laughs> a what? A what? A wild pig? No. An owl? Oh, <laughs> an owl. <laughs> Are they dangerous? No. Oh, good. Now, well, where was I in my story? Oh, yeah. Fearless Sam, nose to nose with the rattlesnake. Well, I just looked that critter in the eye. And beady eyes they were, too, really little, tiny little ones. And I said, Vamoose, you varmint. <laughs> if you were a fireman, which hat would you wear? That's the one, all right. Oh, these boxes are heavy. Oh, I could use a rest. Oh. I wonder what's inside this box. A baby bonnet. Isn't that adorable? A baby. Boy, now that's the life. No work. Someone to carry you around and take care of you. Wouldn't it be great to be a baby again? Well, all right, check this out. Cute, cute. Not bad. Now this is the life. Oh! Oops, someone's coming. Who's this? Now there's my sweet little darling, Mama's precious little Jody. That's me, precious as precious can be. Mama's just going to fix a nice little lunch lunch for her Jody. Great, I'm starved. I could go for a pepperoni pizza and a side order. We'll of... have some nice strained squash and egg yolk. Strained squash and egg yolk? Ugh! I'd rather have pickles and lemons. After our lunch lunch, we'll put Precious down for a nice long nap. Nap? It's got to be the middle of the day. I can't sleep. Oh. I don't want to be a baby. You know what? I'm glad I'm not a baby anymore. What about you? Would you like to be a baby again? Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to work. Know what I'm doing? Knitting. <laughs> yeah, sort of helps to pass the time. Working nights gets kind of lonely, you know. Been knitting this particular hat since 1926. <sighs> I'd say it's pretty near done, too. Guess it's time to try it on for size. Here goes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I... I guess I got a little carried away there. Maybe it's a bit big. Yep. Yeah. I'll have to start that over again later. And now I'd like to introduce a nursery ride by Mother Goose. Jerry Hall, he is so small, a rat could eat him, hat and all. Here are four hats. Which hat? is the biggest. Which hat is the smallest? You've got it. Yep. It's about that time again. Yeah. Muffy! Oh, Muffy! <laughs> You're gonna miss the story. Well, not much we can do about that. Boy, this is going to be a good one, too. And that little silly mouse is going to miss it. Oh, well. <laughs> Hi, my name is Deborah, and this is Simon. He's a rabbit. As you can tell, 
Simon isn't your ordinary hippity hop around the garden kind of rabbit. No, Simon's special. He's in show business, and this is his story. Once there's a rabbit named Simon who lived his life locked away in a magician's hat. It was quite a place inside that hat. Wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, a feather bed, TV, stereo, even a small kitchen with a refrigerator jam-packed with carrots. What a life! Every night at exactly 7.30, Simon put on his tuxedo, combed his whiskers, and waited for the magic words. Abracadabra and hippity-hop, from out of my hat a bunny will pop. And with those words, a magician reached inside the hat, grabbed Simon by the ears, and pulled him out with a ta-da! The people in the audience would clap and whistle and cheer. Bravo, they cried. More, more magic. How Simon loved the sound of that applause. But all too soon, the magic ended. The people in the audience went home, and Simon found himself back in his hat, alone. One night, as Simon lay in bed watching TV and munching on a carrot, he wondered what it would be like to be a regular rabbit. To run through the fields and nibble on clover, to sleep on the ground with the stars overhead, he decided to find out. The very next night, when the magician pulled him from the hat, Simon wriggled loose and darted for the exit. The magician ran after him, but Simon was too quick and slipped easily through the doorway. Safe outside, Simon began to explore his new home. Simon discovered that the world was indeed a wonderful place, full of butterflies and bumblebees, gentle breezes and sweet grasses, and cats. Simon had never seen a cat before, but one look at those hungry eyes and sharp teeth told Simon to run and run and run. Through the bramble bushes across a dusty field, down an embankment and under a garden gate, where he fell to the ground exhausted. As Simon lay there, his little tuxedo tattered and torn. He heard a small voice. Poor little thing. What happened to you? The voice said. Come with me. I already have two pets. Mum won't mind one more. And off they went. That night, as he snuggled in the little boy's arms, Simon thought, surely this is magic. you wear. So that's which witch hat you would wear. <laughs> uh, I think she turned herself into a frog. Well, here it is, Buffy. This is my room. Here I see I painted the floor all by myself. And then the store gave me that lamp. And those are my posters. And, uh, well, all in all, I think it's pretty super. Well, your store's machine is super, too. But tell me, Ooh. Sam, what does it do? What, uh, this machine? Oh, this is a computer. And it, uh, it, um... Tell me something, Muffy. Why do you always talk in rhyme? Oh, alas, alas. I was born to rhyme, and so must do till the end of time. <gasps> oh. Yeah, well, I always thought that was kind of, you know, peculiar. But then there's a lot of peculiar things, like, I don't know if this machine's even on or not. Unit on and functioning. Do not hit. I am delicate. Well, I, I'm sorry, machine. I... Now, look at that. Here I am, apologizing to a computer. First, it's a mouse who talks in rhyme, and then a computer 
Uh, not to mention the mannequin upstairs with the magic hat running around, and... I don't know. Life was a lot simpler when I was a boy. <laughs> Just look at all those buttons and gizmos. Newfangled gadgets. <laughs> Never thought I'd see the day when Sam Crenshaw would be talking with the machine. I am not a machine. I'm a TXL Series 4 computer. I'm programmed to survey the store with remote cameras and to supply any and all information required. Example, 3,267 hats available in the store. Big deal, the machine counts hats. <laughs> Plus one ridiculous looking ski cap. <laughs> chuckle, chuckle. Very funny, computer. Now would you please punch up the second floor? I'd like to check on Jody. Jody, I think your hat display is beautiful. Well, thank you. Yeah. But I couldn't have done it without your help. I bet we have just about every kind of hat in the whole world here. Well, not every hat, but we have quite a few. Oh, it is. Turban, toque, sombrero, sets and... Hey, ride them, cowboy. Derby, baseball, so cap, and crown. Got oh, one. So elegant. <laughs> Kerchief, coonskin, oh, cap. <laughs> Top hat bowler and there's hats for clowns. Hillbox busty, helmet, beret. That's a busty. Different hats for different days. It sure is. <laughs> Hillbox busty, helmet, beret. I don't know what that is. Different hats for different days. <laughs> now watch this. I got something. Why? What are you going to do? This one. This one. What that one? Yep. Okay, oh, here no. we go. Here's the big not. finish here. Oh. <laughs> okay, drum roll. Yeah, they can do it too. Up. Woo, almost. <laughs> ready? Four wool hats are great for snowstorms. He can keep out the wind and cold. His standard hats with beads and flowers. Curly hats for young and old. Hats for days and hats for Just run.